The psalm response today, in your great love, Lord, answer me. We're always asking for God's help. I'm always looking for an answer. But as I often say to my congregation, it's all in here already. What God does is point us to what's in here because in here we find the answers. We find the wisdom. We didn't come into the world helpless. There is such richness within each one of us. We simply don't always access it very well. You know, we have, we have come a long way in, in, in computers in my lifetime. I mean, just think of what, what fits on a tiny little one of those sticks or in a, you know, in a memory and drives and all that. It's amazing, absolutely amazing. Well, what you possess dwarfs all of that, but we don't have the best recall system. We can't always get to it. Sometimes we forget just how fortunate we are in what God has given us. And when God answers our prayers, it's more like God is saying to us, you have to look in this corner of the heart, kind of go around here, and it's already in there. You know the commercial about the sauce years ago? You know all the good stuff? It's already in there. Well, it's already in you. You just have to find it. And prayer helps us do that, especially if we're, and there's the word I used at the beginning of the week, in distress. Because distress and hard times and sinful, all kinds of things can keep us from exploring this because we're distressed and we're not looking within to all the great stuff that God has put there. And in prayer, God helps us to get through the distress and start searching the four corners of the heart and finding the great things that are in there. In the Psalm, the person is obviously under a lot of stress here. Um, those outnumber the hairs in my head who hate me, uh, too many for my strength, are they uh, who wrongfully are my enemies? Um, and it goes on and on and on. It's having a hard time, a lot of distress here, but in the end, I pray to you, O Lord, for the time of your favor. In your great kindness, answer me with your constant help. What did I just say? Answer me with your favor, your constant help. I pray, and you answer me with your favor and your help, which is to look within and find what you need, because it's already in there. It's always been there. Heroes that are uh, out on the battlefield or in, in life and death situations or in, in, in fire situations, whatever the case may be, those people didn't read a book on how to be a hero. Oh, here's the book that's going to teach you how to get a medal and how to rise above everybody else and be a hero. No books like that exist. You have to, it's situational. All of a sudden, you look around you and the world's falling apart and you say to yourself, I won't let this happen. Maybe the world is falling apart, but I know what I can do in my little part of it to rescue somebody. I know what I can do to save a life. I know what I can do in this moment of distress and great loss and pain to make it better. Maybe not fix it completely, but I know what needs to be done. And in some cases, people give their very lives for others in those situations, and they're heroes. They didn't read a book about what it would take in terms of you might have to sacrifice yourself. They looked within themselves and saw that the needs of the other outweigh the needs of the many, the few, or even the one. And people give of themselves to their last breath, and we celebrate that kind of sacrifice. But so many are capable of that, and so much more. Think about that, my friends. I began the week talking about distress, and I want to end it talking about the great joy that comes with relieving that distress. Maybe we relieve it in among ourselves. Maybe we relieve it in the world, but God does not want us to live as distressed people, but as hopeful people who go out in the world as a Christ unto others, who go out into the world perpetrating acts of faith, hope, charity, love, forgiveness, and all those other one thing, wonderful things that Christ speaks of in the gospel. Be a giver of gifts, my friends. Your heart is filled with them, overabundant. As Christ says, poured into the hem of your garment, overflowing is what God gives to you. Let it, overflow, let it overflow into the lives of others. Share your good fortune that is the love of God you have. The Gospel today is from Matthew. Jesus came to his native place and taught the people in their synagogue. They were astonished and they said, Where did this man get such wisdom and the mighty deeds? Is he not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother named Mary, his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? Are not his sisters all with us? Where did this man get all of this? They took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, 
A prophet is not without honor, except in his native place and in his own house. He did not work many mighty deeds there because of their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. Must have been a really terrible homecoming, wasn't it? Jesus goes to his native village and they're jealous. They're not really accepting and they're thinking to themselves, you know, his family is still among us. Who does he think he is? People lived very simple lives in those days, not very long lives either, and they liked everything to be pretty much the same. And that's all too often the case in our own time. I think one of the phrases that's the worst one I hate to hear is, um, we've always done it this way. You know, bringing change into people's lives, moving forward, evolving, and seeing different possibilities makes us very, very creative, innovative people, but there's a whole lot of people who don't want to go anywhere. There are always people who live in the past, people who think it was always better than it is now. It wasn't necessarily better, it was different. That's the way I like to put it. Life is different in every age, in every decade of our lives, it's different. That doesn't mean that it's necessarily better. But some people kind of draw themselves inward as they grow older, and all they see is, is what was, and they don't see what could be. Jesus came to that village. He is what was possible, what could be, which is, of course, an unbelievable revelation as the Son of God. They didn't even want to take the very first step of accepting him as one of their own. You think that when he came home, they would give him a parade. You know, they would make a big deal out of this. Look who's here. We've heard about his preaching. Why don't you tell him? He might have had special parables and stories only for them because he grew up there. But there was a lack of faith. It says he could not work many mighty deeds because there was a lack of faith. Faith, you see, my friends, is the foundation of everything. As I've often said, it's cyclical. It's faith in God that enables us to be strong in our faith, which we then transfer over to our relationships, our marriages, and our families. Faith in our marriages and relationships and families, we then translate into the faith we have in God and in His Son. It all kind of works together to, to make us truly not only children of God, but people of strong abiding faith because we're, we're looking at it in, in two very different ways. They may diverge, but they come together because God has made us and we will go home to God. So everything in between that we enjoy in life because of the gift of faith and the way we forge families happens because God has placed within us that gift of faith. And so when we come down the aisle and we receive the Eucharist and we say amen, it is truly Jesus, the Son of God, that faith is strengthened. It is, it is solidified so that faith does become that foundation. There's nothing worse than a hopeless, faithless person. And that's what Jesus found when he went to his village. Lack of faith must have made him very, very sad. What would he find when he comes here? I suppose a lot of people, too, have lost a lot of hope and faith, maybe because of the time we're living in, because of the virus. But I see in my parish and in my community people of incredibly great faith living full and complete lives. Even under the duress of the, cre the present medical crisis, they're still doing it. Don't lose faith, my friends. Let us not be like that village. Rather, let us be the group, the parish, the community that welcomes Christ because the faith we have is from God. Why would we not welcome his son each and every day? And now, my friends, as we have shared the word of God together, I invite you to spend time with me in front of the Blessed Sacrament as we share our spiritual prayer of communion.
Join me, my friends, now in the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My friends, before I commend you to share a sign of peace, I want to share with you that we are going to add the uh, Blessed Sacrament to our daily programming. Uh, we will provide one hour of um, attention to our tabernacle here in our church. Uh, we have an extraordinary building, our tabernacle, uh, fashioned uh, very much in the way of the Ark of the Covenant. Uh, the folks who built this church and the pastor had an eye for the dramatic and for beautiful design. And behind our tabernacle, as you can see, an incredible Italian mosaic of the cup and the Eucharist flanked um, with a mosaic decoration and, of course, the uh, sanctuary light. So uh, we're going to leave you uh, with one hour of uh, the camera uh, and the Blessed Sacrament so that you can reflect uh, and pray. Uh, we will have some prayers dedicated to the Eucharist on the screen uh, as well. Uh, and uh, perhaps um, some appropriate uh, music in the background. We hope you uh, enjoy this as we build our broadcast day, which is the term they use these days in media. We will be adding other features as time goes on. Uh, this programming began with the COVID virus, um, making our decision to really get into media in this parish. We had the equipment, but we were doing it slowly. We have certainly sped it up. I want to thank uh, my good friend Brian, our video director behind the camera, and uh, Sean and a few others who have helped us do this. We're going to bring much more programming to you as time goes on, uh, and we're working very hard at it. Uh, be that as it may, my friends, may the peace of the Lord be with you always, and wherever you are and whomever you're with, share God's love and peace at this time, and I will see you soon. And again, uh, enjoy some time in front of the Eucharist. If you're at home, uh, by yourself, wherever you are, uh, perhaps some prayers uh, and time spent with the Lord will make your day more calm, more peace-filled, and certainly draw you near to Jesus Christ.